Man of God, I know he he don't feel that way, but I feel that way about him. Amen. And you come to hear, you know, we, we've, we've kind of pushed away. If you need to hear from God, open your ears and let the preacher preach to you. Amen. Amen. You'll get your answer through the preaching. Well, hello. Amen. Hallelujah. We want the elder to come tonight. Amen. We want him to take his liberty. Preach to us. We got to make it. Amen. Come on, elder. Obey the Holy Ghost tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whoa. This one is hot. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated for a little while. And it is so good. It's so good to be in the great state of Oklahoma. And um, I tell you, I told the folks, uh, I told them uh, the last service. When was that? Sunday night. I told them Sunday night at home. I remembered some years ago coming to Oklahoma, of course, uh, living in Texas for a number of years now, but I told the folks at home, I said, I had to come, I had to go to Oklahoma to find real cowboys, and uh, I said, driving up here, I looked out in the field, I mean, I didn't see any of this trip, but back when, a few years ago, they were on horseback, and I'm talking about chaps and spurs, and, and uh, the whole deal, the whole deal, Oklahoma. And uh, it's about the only state in the Union. Uh, you would read on the map, and you read it real fast. Somebody may even think he's talking in tongues out of all these towns. Tishomingo, <laughs> Oklahoma, Oklahoma, all these towns. Amen. Well, Brother Heron, uh encouraged you a while ago to, you know, smile and show your teeth or where they used to be or something and um, so uh, I know I know I'm kind of hard to look at but I won't be up here long and uh, but we are delighted to uh, be here appreciate very much the invitation and thank these sponsors or whoever is involved in putting all this together and um, we appreciate the invitation the confidence being extended to ask us to come and be a part of uh, camp meeting service here in this state. I don't know for sure how many churches are represented here, but uh, appreciate the ministry that have come tonight and uh, the saints of God and uh, any and all visitors that might be with us tonight. God bless you for taking a Wednesday night <coughs> to be in the house of the Lord. Some of you may have... Uh, made a trip to be here. I don't know how far you may have had to drive to be here. You may not have had chance to have supper uh, to be able to be here. Uh, I don't know, but uh, whatever sacrifices you have made to uh, be in this first night of uh, 2014 camp meeting gathering, God bless you. And uh, we really want the Lord to bless you. Praise God. We really do appreciate the singing, the worship here tonight. I know that first nights, you know, kind of uh, everybody's kind of catching their breath. And, uh, ooh, I'm here, you know. Didn't know if I could make it, but I'm here. And uh, at first nights, sometimes there's a bit of uh, looking about, looking around, and uh, seeing who is here, and uh, by now, after uh, these minutes that we have been in the service tonight, I hope you got all the looking taken care of, amen, and we can get down to business and uh, look into this good book and see what the Lord would have to say to us. We're excited about being here this week with Elder McFall, a good friend, longtime friend, it soon be 23 years ago. Just in a matter of days and months since uh, we first met uh, down in southeast Texas. We love and appreciate Elder McFall. And you will be blessed in the day services. And uh, we encourage you to be here if you possibly can. And a great man of God and tremendous ministry. And 
you will be blessed. The last time we worked together was uh, uh, upstate Michigan, way up on Lake Superior, uh, back in the, I think it was the last century back there, somewhere before the 2000s maybe or shortly thereafter. It's been a while, but uh, we're so happy to see him and and uh, now he is a uh, bona fide registered resident of uh, Oklahoma. Yay, yay, yay. And Oki. Amen. Anyway, and uh, I'm, I'm from way down in the swamplands. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Land of Creole and catfish and and uh, gumbo and mud bugs and, and uh, I got to finish it. This is not in the eating category, but mosquitoes and roaches and and uh, all of that, all of that other stuff. But the, that my wife likes, you know. I uh, yeah, that's 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 a stretch. You can believe that. I feel like I'm in a visiting mood here. We got to get out of this, or we'll be here a long time. They're just going to be here a long time, and uh, y'all making it too easy. But enjoy this. Uh, it may not be much better <laughs> after a while. So just just enjoy our visit. Just enjoy our visit. Amen. And I see a bunch of tables back here in the back. What's what's that all about? Food after church, or you going to eat when I'm about when I'm through? When I'm about through, I'm just about through. It's it's hard it's hard to compete trying to preach looking at set table, but uh, I know uh, necessity necessity demands it. Praise God! I want to talk with you tonight for a few minutes, and I need to get busy. You'll stand with me, and I'd like to invite your attention to the book of Saint Luke, chapter twenty-four. We'll also be reading from the book of Acts, chapter one, and uh, I really feel impressed uh, about this. I uh, can say that to my memory, I have never preached or attempted Bible class lesson message exactly from these scriptures and uh, never made the application in uh, concentrating on a message in this area, but I ask your uh, tolerance I, I ask for your kindness. I am going to try my best to be ex uh, to explain what I'm seeing. But uh, and I've got some things on this piece of paper here. But uh, I'm I'm feeling more than I can put on paper. There's just a stirring and moving in my spirit, and I stand here in faith tonight. I, I step up in faith tonight. I tried to do my homework. I tried to study. I tried to seek God, but I still find myself standing here in faith, asking God to give clarity and uh, to give understanding and to speak to me further, further in this subject than where I've even come in the last few days. Amen. My voice is not good. I woke up yesterday morning with a bad cough, and I said, Devil, you're a liar. Amen. Surely the Lord's got something in store for us this week, and uh, I've never had a cough like I've had the last couple of days, but I'm pressing on, and uh, I hope that you will just be patient with me. Luke chapter 24 and verse number uh, 49 beginning and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high and he led them out as far as to Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them and it came to pass while he blessed them he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated and 
Turn with me also to the book of the Acts of the Apostles. We understand that Luke, the gospel writer of the gospel of St. Luke that bears his name, was also the penman and the writer of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And he picks up the narrative of his account of the uh, happenings that were occurring. Chapter 1 and verse 1, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus. We don't know for sure. There's not much history about the reference to this name. We don't know much about this individual. But it appears that Luke was writing this account, and uh, for whatever reason, he personalizes this individual. O oh, Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive, after his passion or his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them. Now he tags in to where he left off in the book of Luke. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart, not depart from Jerusalem but wait, not depart, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. He commanded them that they should not depart, but wait, to not depart, but wait. Luke's account here, he makes this familiar declaration and commandment to his followers. Verse 49, this is a passage that all apostolic Pentecostals really ought to have in their memory. I would encourage you, young person, teenager, no matter really what your age, get a hold of some of these texts and try to commit them into your heart and into your spirit. 24 and 49 of Luke, a memorable passage. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye. And that is what I want to talk with you about for a few minutes tonight. But tarry, but tarry ye. In the city, he points out, of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. I want you to stay there. I want you to wait there. I want you to tarry, but tarry. I've got a promise. I've got something in mind. I've got a tomorrow for you. I've got a future for you, but I've got to get you at the right place. I've got to get you in the right frame of mind. I've got to get you in the right reference of spirit and heart. I want you to go, and I want you to stay, and I want you to wait. I want you to tarry. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, of course, are uh, what are referred to as the, the gospel writers. Most Bibles and publications of the Bible have at the beginning of each of these books. It will read something like this, the gospel according to Matthew. And then you come to Mark, and again, the gospel according to Mark. And then as well, Luke and John, the gospel. What is the gospel? It represents a lot of things. It represents a large spectrum of things. But primarily, I believe it is spelled out most perfectly by the Apostle Paul. I don't have the text before me, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and verse 1, he said, I delivered unto you that which I first also received, how that Christ died for our sins. Thank you, Brother Heron. <laughs> Amen. I got a little confirmation a minute ago. Christ died for our sins. According to the scripture, 
Amen. He was married and rose again the third day, according to the scripture. That Jewish boy, I'm telling you, no disrespect intended, but that one that had been a Pharisee of Pharisees, that one that had sat at the feet of Gamaliel and learned the law, that one that was zealous for the law, brother, when he got a revelation, he got a revelation. Amen. After his conversion in the book of Acts chapter 9, the scripture says even then he was straightway in the synagogue preaching Christ. Hallelujah. He wrote to the Galatian church and he was well aware that they were uh, a bit set back after hearing that he, Paul, had now become a preacher. He wrote to them and said, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> How could it be that he has become a preacher of the faith that he wants destroyed? Praise God. But he wrote to Timothy and said, I know why. I am a picture of God's long suffering. I am a picture of God's grace. I am a picture of God's mercy. That in me first he might show, oh yeah, how great he is and how merciful he is and how loving and kind that he is. And I believe that that lived in the heart and in the very soul of this great man until his dying day. It was all, let me tell you who Jesus is. I found him in the Passover. Let me tell you who Jesus is. I found him the high priest of our profession. Let me tell you who Jesus is. Oh yeah, in one way or another he was saying he is the first. He's the last. Let me tell you who Jesus is. He was before all things and by him all things consist. The story of Jesus is really the story of the gospel. The miracles that Jesus performed, amen, beginning with his miraculous birth, of course, and the uh, parade of miracles and the long line of his miracle ministry. And then he begins to talk to them about his mission and his real purpose in the earth. He begins to part the curtain. He begins to tell them, I'm going to go up to Jerusalem and I'm going to uh, be betrayed into the hands of men and I'm going to suffer at the hands of the chief priest and the scribes and the elders and and he even just specifically told them that they would he would be killed and that he would rise again the third day amen sadly enough even after the resurrection and some come back from an empty tomb to tell the other disciples and apostles he's not there he's risen and even there, the Bible said it appeared unto them as idle tales. After all the miracles, after seeing all that Jesus did, I'm going to tell you, don't underestimate flesh. Don't underestimate the power of unbelief. Oh, don't underestimate a man, an unregenerated mind. Even after three and a half years of miraculous ministry, turning water to wine at the start, and from there lepers cleansed and blinded eyes open, and after him giving them Bible lessons, after him pointing out to them, I'm going to Jerusalem, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to be killed, but I'm going to rise. And then they come to tell him there's an empty tomb, and they said, nothing doing. That, that, that certainly could not be the case. He appears to them in a miraculous way. First in this 24th chapter of Luke, he appears to the two men on the road to Emmaus. And there's two Bible lessons in the 24th chapter of Luke. Oh, I would love to have heard. He talks to the men on the road to Emmaus. And the Bible said that beginning with Moses and the law and the prophets, he expounded unto them in the scripture all things concerning himself. And then he appears to his, his own. And again, he walks them back through the scripture. You see, he was the living word. Amen. He was the one that inspired those men hundreds of years before to pen those words and write those words. 
Amen. And now his mission is complete. He was already, amen, resurrected. He had already said out there on the cross, it is finished. Praise God. All that was written of him was fulfilled. And he did rise again. And he did appear unto his followers. And, and say thus it is written. And thus it behooved Christ to suffer. And rise from the dead the third day. And this is the object of all of that. And that repentance and remission of sins. Should be preached in his name. Among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. This is a reason. There is a cause for that death, burial, and resurrection. It was so as that a gospel message could be preached into the world. Hallelujah. And two elusive things that the human family had never known anything about. And that was real repentance. And that was real remission of sin. Hallelujah. And he said, I'm telling you, this is why I came. This is why I lived. That this is why I was crucified. This is why I was buried. And this is why I rose again. So that repentance and remission of sin could be preached in my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew's account, it was spoken there, and Luke's account, and Mark's account. In all of these gospel writers, uh, there is what is referred to as the Great Commission. It's worded a little different in all three accounts, in all three gospel accounts. But hey, bottom line, Jesus was saying, I went to the cross, but there was more. And that's the resurrection. Hallelujah. Amen. I went to the cross, but there's more. That's another step is the resurrection. After the resurrection, there was going to be an ascension where Jesus went back into the glory world. But after the ascension, there was another step. He ascended on high. But it wasn't just to vanish. It wasn't just to close the book. It wasn't just to seal the story. Paul said he ascended, but he gave gifts unto men. He gave gifts unto men. The whole plan, the whole purpose was the giving of the gifts. I know in Ephesians chapter 4, just give me a little time. It speaks about the ministry as being the gifts. Some of the gifts that he gives. Are you happy for the ministry in our lives? Amen. But let me back up and just remind us of this precious, priceless gift of the indwelling spirit of the baptism of the Holy Ghost that Jesus refers to as the promise of the Father as the promise of the Father and when the Spirit of Christ the Holy Ghost began to move in the heart of Peter on the day of Pentecost he walked us back through that book and he said let me tell you about the promise of the Father in the last days saith God I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh this is the promise of the Father. And this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. Oh, hallelujah. It's the promise of the Father. It's what God had in his mind. Oh, yeah. The virgin overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. The Christ child born. The miraculous ministry of Jesus. Three and a half years of even what we've got recorded. And John said, this is not all that he began to do and teach. Amen. But what is in the book is there. But these are written that you might believe and that believing you might have life through his name. Oh, what God had in mind even from before the foundation of the world was the church. It was individuals being anointed and empowered of the Holy Ghost. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I must hurry here tonight. The Apostle John in 1 John talked about the Holy Ghost. It's referenced to as the unction. An unction from the Holy One. There's another reference in 1 John. An anointing. It is an unction and an anointing. Oh, hallelujah. On the day of Pentecost, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is a Pentecostal camp tonight. This is a Pentecostal apostolic gathering tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. And you're looking at one old ball-headed grandpa here. I'm not leaving the fundamentals. I'm not leaving the foundational truths. I'm not going to spend my time in prayer oratory, even if I could do it. I'm not going to wander out in the Milky Way somewhere. I want to walk down the center aisle of somebody's heart and say, you must be back again of water and of the spirit well give the Lord a hand clap of praise here tonight <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah you can be seated but Jesus said the promise of the father oh and how much was in his mind I send the promise of the father he could have stopped right there and went to Joel. He could have stopped right there and spoke about the writings of Jeremiah that said, I'm going to put my law on the inward parts. Oh, it was the new covenant that was spoken of in Jeremiah's writings. It was the promise of the Father. It was what God was ultimately reaching for. Souls, individuals, anointed, empowered, and sent. The mission that he had for them was to spread his story and tell about him. I read this afternoon, and this is just a little postscript here, and I'm, I'm, I'm really dragging here, and I hope you're patient with me. But I read concerning the picking of uh, the <coughs> apostle uh, to take the place of Judas. You can read about it in the first chapter of the book of Acts. And for whatever it's worth, I'm not making a real doctrinal thing, but I wonder if it's not, I really believe personally it's worthy of attention. And that is the wording. I won't take the time to read it, but it was uh, those two that were chosen and uh, the lots that were going to be cast to find out uh, which it should be. But the prerequisite was that uh, they had would have been with us, he said, from the time of John and all the way through the ministry of Jesus. It's not worded just like that, but the essence of it is gonna, it's going to be somebody that has been with us. It's going to be somebody that has seen what we've seen. It's got to be somebody that's heard what we've heard. And last, but far from least, I believe was the point they have, they've got to have been a witness of the resurrection. They're going to have to be a witness of the resurrection. Oh, yeah. And when you get to Acts chapter 1, and maybe this is just a midweek Bible study on Wednesday, but in, in Acts chapter 1, hey, brother, they were in that upper room. They were in that place because... Jesus had said, go, tarry. In Acts 1.14, these all continued. Everybody said continued. They all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary. And Mary. Oh, there's some folks in the world think she's got a lot of stroke. But Mary needed the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and Mary. <laughs> the mother of Jesus, hallelujah, and his brethren, brother, they were there and they were continuing in prayer because Jesus said, go, tarry. Now, when I get there, I'll get there and we'll be through maybe. But you know what? Listen, there was something involved in, in, in the type and shadow and the 
and the unveiling and unfolding of the plan. If I get anything wrong, you guys just just be merciful to me. And I don't want to ever misrepresent Scripture. And I try to tell it right. But, but you know, uh, Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover, 50 days there needed to be to keep the type in the shadow. I'm telling you, this, this crowd that feels like that God just runs off the cuff, this, this, this crowd that thinks that it's just uh, however it unfolds, no, 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 no. God has always had a pattern. He's got a way to get her done, brother. He's got a way to reach the objective. Praise God. And he's not going to be untrue to his types. He's not going to be untrue to the shadows of the Old Testament. Brother, that's why this book comes together. Brother, it comes together tongue in groove. That's why after how many hundreds of years and ever how many writers, <laughs> there's no mistakes in that book. There may have been many writers, but there was only one author. There may have been a whole bunch of folks pushing the scroll, hallelujah, and pushing the quill, but there was one divine mind behind it all. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Pentecost, Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover. And then you do remember, we read it to you in the first chapter, that 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus walked with his apostles. 40 days, the Bible said, he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. Amen. Amen. Brother, he didn't come out of the tomb and just swoop back into the glory world. Hallelujah. When I read in the book of Acts, there was numbers of places he said, where the Peter would say, and we are witnesses of these things. Amen. Amen. I told you, the apostle, the original apostle that had to be chosen, he had to be a witness of the resurrection. Forty days. Jesus walked with them. And the Bible said he spoke with them about things concerning the biggest thing on God's mind, and that is the kingdom. That is the kingdom. Amen. He spoke with them about the kingdom. I know. Give me some room. Uh, I know that we're dealing with time frame. I know we are dealing with a, a type that had to be fulfilled. I understand. And I understand that. Amen. Forty days. And then we have been told that that must then account that perhaps they're tarrying in the upper room or wherever it was, maybe that was 10 days to make up the 50 days. Don't leave me up here. Maybe, maybe that was the, maybe that 40 days he walked with them and they had 10 more days to get to the day of Pentecost. Maybe it was, maybe it was that they prayed and they lingered and they tarried. I know the type and the shadow had to be fulfilled. And watch this. I know. I know. Now I know. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't look too smart, but I, I'm maybe a little smarter than I look. I hope. But, uh, hey, uh, I know, I know uh, that since the day of Pentecost, we've heard preachers say, you don't have to tarry. It's already been given. And I can say, amen. Amen. The initial outpouring, God introducing the baptism of the Holy Ghost on the human family. It happened in God's time. It happened on time. Yeah, I understand that. And in one way I can say, yes, sir. That's right. It's available. It's for whosoever will. I understand that. I endorse that. Yes, I'll say amen to the preacher that says, hey, the Holy Ghost is available now and, and, and you don't have to tarry. No, maybe not in the sense of the original. But you know what? You know what? I, as a boy, I still remember him talking about come tarry for the Holy Ghost. I don't want to be a minister of questions here tonight. Just give me your mind just a little bit. I still remember him telling, you want it? Get up here and spend some time, bless God. Hallelujah. You want it? 
Get under the get under the microscope and let God do something and look you over. Hey, you want it? You ain't going to get it sitting on your hands. Hey, boy, you want it? Get in the altar every time there's an altar call. Hey, you want the Holy Ghost? Get after it. And I seek ye the Lord. They told me, well, he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. They told me today is the day of salvation. And now is the appointed time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I'm not trying to introduce a new doctrine. I can only tell you what I've been feeling in my heart. Amen. Maybe we need to get some carrying back in Pentecost. Maybe we need to get some lingering in his presence back in Pentecost. Maybe we need to lay our little iPads and our iPhones. In our iPhones. Amen. And God forbid, in some cases, their television and, and their DVDs and, and all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you to get something from God. Oh, I know God can talk to you. I, you can be seated. I met folks and tried to pastor folks. It appears that they heard more from God on a creek bank, a river bank, than I did in my office all day Saturday. It just seemed like that they heard from God so very, very easy. But I'm going to tell you, the enlightenment and the revelation and the unveiling and the understanding that I've come to know. It don't come with a hello, goodbye, Jesus. It don't come. Are you ready? I like the song. I've sung the song. I'll sing it again. Oh, let's have a little talk. Now, I'm not much of a preacher, but I'm a good singer. Let's have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all. I love the song. I've sung the song. I'll sing it again. But I'm going to tell you, 2014 with white whiskered devils. 2014 with cultural shifts. 2014 with societal revolutions. 2014 with principalities and powers and seducing spirits and doctrines of men and doctrines of devils. Maybe there's something that ought to ring out into our ears where Jesus said, but, 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 Terry, but, but, Terry, but, but, Terry. Everybody said, but, Terry. I got a promise for you, but go, Terry, for it. Praise God. You can be seated. My, was, 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 it, was, was, was the angel choir with me a while ago or what? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You, uh, but Terry, if I said Terry, I know this may not be special meat and preaching, but it's special enough for me. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I'll tell you where Brother Phillips is. I'm hearing a call from another world that says pull away a while. I'm hearing a call from another world that says, get a hold of your Bible, Phillips. I'm hearing a call from another world that says, hey, it might take a little more than a little talk now. Amen. There's nothing wrong. Let's get the tarrying back in Pentecost. Watch this. Watch this. I'm not too smart. I got a friend named Webster. He, he might have died drunk, but he was sober this time. That's what they said. But anyway, <coughs> Terry, Terry, everybody said, Terry, are you ready to be slow in going? Terry, this is profound, to stay somewhere. Terry, to linger in expectation. To Terry is to abide, to stay in. Or at a place. Maybe it was ten days. Some think seven. Others ten. We do not know how long. But we do know. One fourteen of Acts said they continued. They continued in prayer. I'm going to tell you. Pentecost was born in a prayer meeting. And it will be sustained in a prayer meeting. It was born with some people focusing. Their heart. Their mind. Their word. 
It was born with somebody leaving fishing boats, leaving nets, leaving their father, leaving their mother, and going in a consecrated place for a consecrated set apart time and tarrying and lingering, going slow, staying somewhere to abide, amen, to stay in or at a place. I'm going to hurry on. I'm going to tell you that's how the New Testament church got here. Concentration, dedication, concentration, dedication, prolonged activity of focus. All they knew was he said there's a promise. I don't know, I don't know how much he told them in the 40 days that he walked with them, talking to them about the kingdom. I don't know if they even knew what to expect. I don't know if they even knew what was going to happen. My personal feeling is that they didn't. All they knew was he said it's a promise and we're here and we're here and we're lingering here. We're staying with expectation here. We're going to be slow leaving this place here. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me tonight? That's how it come here. That's how it's going to stay here. That's what makes us children of God. It's lingering in His presence. Could it be, could it be, amen, that in this humble gathering here this week that something could happen in the Spirit? We want you to have a good time. There might be some ball playing and I don't know what all. Amen. And these men want you to have a good time. But you know what? The real objective, I think, is to get something from God. I think the real objective is that by the time the lights go out Friday night, that we can walk out of here having been with God in a secret place. And there in the Spirit, there in the Spirit, Amen. That the Word of God could have ministered to us. That the Spirit of God could have enlightened us. That the Holy Ghost could have given us insight that we never had before. As you have set aside these days and this time. Are you ready to tarry? Let's put the tarrying back in Pentecost again. Oh, clap your hands for the glory of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can be seated. Y'all got a couple more minutes? Now, I'm really going to check out this tarrying business tonight. And this, this long-winded preaching, I'm going to check out your tarrying business here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. I kind of like the story I heard about a man. He, he kind of waxed long in preaching and... Uh, he went back to Genesis and he was walking through the Bible and he was talking about this character and that character and this man and that man and this man and that man. And finally about an hour and a half, two hours into it, and he said, here comes Elijah. What are we going to do with him? And the fellow got up and said, he can have my seat. <laughs> oh, forgive me, forgive me. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. I may look like I should have been there, but I, I, I wasn't at Azusa Street. I know, I know. I, I look like I could have been, but uh, I wasn't at Azusa Street. And I wasn't at some of the accounts that we've read about in Pentecostal history. Y'all got a minute? I wasn't there. Uh, some events that happened and some outpourings of the Spirit that took place. I'm not saying the church was born at the turn of the century. God's always had a church. But suffice to say, and I hope you don't charge me, it's quite clear that historically there was a, an awakening of some sort. People got in their Bibles, at some little Bible school they told me, and they started looking in the Scripture. And they said, it looks like in the book of Acts, whenever anybody got the Holy Ghost, they talked in tongues. And they got hungry about that and got to tarrying around that idea. 
and they got the pastor in their Bibles around. Is that the way you read it? Is that how you read it? I wasn't there, but I can only imagine. Is, is, is that what you're feeling about that text? Is that what you're seeing about that? And, and as they lingered, and as they tarried, and as they were inquisitive, and as they were hungry, as they were thirsty for the things of God, tarrying in prayer. Amen. Somebody told the story. Was it New Year's Eve, maybe? And uh, the Holy Ghost came. Somebody started talking in tongues, just like they did in the book of Acts. I'm just, I'm just pointing something out to you. Some of us are the recipients, and we have been the benefactors, because there were some people over, over, well over a hundred years ago, right here in the United States of America, that started tarrying, that started lingering with their Bibles. They started tarrying on their knees, I would imagine, in prayer with an open Bible, tears running down their face. I'm telling you, a whole bunch of folks want to talk a big game, but they don't know much about the tarrying in his presence. Oh, read the book of Psalms. David, over and over again, talked about meditating. I will meditate in thy word. What's he doing? Tarrying, feeding on it, lingering over it. Young person, shut all the technology down. Quit being addicted on everything that comes out as a new invention. I'm not preaching against everything that moves and breathes. I'm just telling you, you've got to agree with Brother Phillips. It's robbing us. It's, it's robbing us. I'm telling you, this plugged up, plugged in generation. I guess I will go to meddling a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, oh, I, I can just see my dad. My dad died at 53. I was only 29 years of age. But I can see, I can see my dad having me come to the supper table. <laughs> I mean, wires running out of my ears. Something stuffed in my pocket, stuffed in my pocket. Hey, Amen. And me sitting down there juking and jiving. He said, I know what my dad would have done. He said, not here. Not now. Get that mess and do something else with it. You know, back there, back there in the other century when I was born, they, they didn't have all that junk. Hallelujah. Well, it's getting a little tight, but I can untighten it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We need, to, we need to get back to some tearing. We need to get back to some family devotion. We need to get back to some home Bible reading. We need to get back to mom and dad being seen with their Bibles in their hand. Amen. At the midnight hour, tearing over the word of God. We need the sounds of prayer back in our Pentecostal homes. We need the sounds of prayer around our Pentecostal altars. But Terry, I got a promise. I made the promise. But you got to Terry. I told you. I prefaced. I got it covered. I know it was the initial outpouring. I know it's already given. And now it's available. I'm not. But would you let me have this liberty? Would you not go away and talk about me? Would you not try to say I'm misusing the scripture? I went to lengths to try to tell you. There was types and shadows that had to be fulfilled. But when I looked at this over the last couple of days, I believe the Holy Ghost quickened it to my heart and said the only way we're going to have revival in 2014 and the only way real holiness is going to be conceived in the heart of our young people and the only way revelation of separation is going to come God is not going to run us down and tackle us on the road of life. He gave us the commandment. Beware, lest your hearts be overcharged, surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day, that day, come upon you unaware. Brother, there's a bunch of stuff that wants to rob us of our lingering with God. I'm not I'm not gonna turn this paper over. We will be here a while. And I gotta try to save what little voice I got. 
But, everybody said but. Promise of the Father, but. I wonder what God would have for some of you. I wonder what God would have for some of us. If he could get us to tarry. There's salvation for some people. Probably, oh, surely right here tonight, God could begin on this night to do a wonderful work in your life and make you that new creature that the elder spoke to us about a while ago. If he could just slow you down, sir. Ma'am, if he could just get you to put the brakes on. I'm telling you, conviction comes. God romances the heart. God begins to deal. Might be somebody here tonight. Part of you wants to run out. And a part of you wants to run too. There's something in you that I don't know what I'm feeling. And there's flesh and there's the devil that wants you to not linger in this. Does it want you to tarry in this? Oh, how many through the years that were robbed of a repentant experience because they let their flesh and the adversary get them with their toes pointed toward the door instead of toward the altar. And God was beckoning and calling them, Come tarry for me. Come wait. Come linger. I got places to take you. I got things I want to do for you. But I got to get your attention. I got to slow you down. That's good for the sinner. The backslider out there running away from God. And the Lord comes and knocks on their heart's door. And he wants them to just tarry a little bit and let me talk to you. Saints of God that the Lord has planned, designed for. He wants to take to a higher height and a deeper depth. It might happen here this week if some of you would just linger a little bit. I mean, I'm so weary with this coming to church with dismissal on your mind. I know it don't have to be a marathon every night. You probably think I'm trying to make it one, but it don't have to be every night. I understand all of that, but on the other hand, brother, there's something about our generation that's hurry up, let's go, let's let's move it, let's... I preached in some churches in Canada 30-some years ago that forever marked me. They had more church after the preaching than they did before. Really. Tarrying. Lingering. I'm going to close and probably on a very negative note. I don't want it to be. I told our folks the other night. In fact, let's stand. Musicians come. I, I told our folks the other night. I said, you know, it may not be a long time at the dismissal. Sometimes I know every church and pastor and preacher has their customs and has their way and but I I'm I'm thinking that these men are much as I and you other men are sometimes I just let's come and stand around the front. Is, am I am I on base and then sometimes it's and sometimes not, but sometimes it's I'm not going to keep you long, I tell them. I'm not going to keep you long, but let's come and stand. And invariably, I still have those that think that's dismissal. I shouldn't get into this, but I'm here. Invariably, I think some are thinking this is my bathroom break, and they've already been three times in the last hour and a half. They need anointed and prayed for or go see a doctor or something. I'm, I'm, I'm ending this up real positive. Here. And I'm, I'm thinking, the devil is making a play for you, sir. The enemy is making a play for you, ma'am. You cannot harness your mind. You are not going to be a disciplined disciple. Brother, when you look up the word disciple, at least in one dictionary I got in, I'm talking about it's right next door to discipline. And I'm thinking, what would God do in your world if you could discipline yourself? If you could bring your mind into captivity? I read that somewhere. 
Bring your thoughts into... What would God do for the last day church? I'm telling you again, early 1900s, there was some people tarrying and waiting and looking. Day of Pentecost, there was some people lingering with expectation. I'm talking moving slow. Feeling after Him. Wouldn't it be great if this week somebody got a revelation or at least a greater insight of this business of waiting in His presence? For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. I say, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He'll strengthen your heart if you could just tarry with Him. Tarry with Him. If we play a chorus of a song tonight. I want you to slip your hands up all over the building tonight. If you'd like this week to make a difference, if you'd like these services to make an impact, why don't you make a commitment? I'm going to tarry. They shall bounce up. I'm going to tarry. Some are coming right now to tarry. Maybe there's somebody else. We don't have to be here all night, but this first night. Let's let the Lord see us wanting to linger a little bit around these altars here. Some first and teenagers are tarry. Come on, apostolic families. Maybe a husband, a wife. Oh, my God. 